but even crazier than that is, of course, the audio that was all over the blogosphere today about the Black Panthers, uh, the new Black Panther Party that is calling for an out and out race war. Uh, let's go to that clip right now. Black Power, Brother Sean. This is Sister Michelle, Chief of Staff for Tampa, St. Petersburg, Tampa, New York. Black Power, Black Power. I just want to say to all the listeners that's on this phone call, if you are having any doubts about getting suited, booted, and armed up for this race war that we in that has never ended, let me tell you something. The things that's about to happen to these honkies, these crackers, these pigs, these pink people, these mother people, it has been long overdue. Yeah, but what she said was right. We got to suit up and boot up. We got to suit up and boot up and get prepared for the war that we're in. So this stuff got to boil over. And all your greats talked about there having to be bloodshed involved with revolution. True revolution means some bloodshed. So there's blood being spilled because there's a new life that is beyond this bloodshed. There's a new reality that is built upon your original African principles and spiritualities and values and norms that is beyond this bloodshed. But we got to go through it. And as the scriptures say, you got to cross it. We're going to have to cross the Red Sea. You're going to have to cross the Red Sea. I know y'all thought it was talking about some sea in some Middle Eastern part of the world. Hell no. We're talking about some blood. You're going to have to cross some blood and go through some blood and some battles and there there are those who wish they could stand in this hour to see the destruction of the devil's world and the devil's society and I ain't talking about no dude underneath the ground with a pitchfork and pantyhose I'm talking about that blonde head blue eyed sometimes brown eyed Caucasian walking around with a mindset a demonistic mindset and the nature to do evil and brutality I say to everyone that is on this call right now, I'm coming out of the gates like that greyhound on that rabbit <laughs> And his prize, my prize right now this evening is going to be the bounty, the arrest, dead or alive, for George Zimmerman. You feel me? To every brother, to every female. I am for violence. If nonviolence means we continue postponing a solution to the American black man's problem just to avoid violence. You feel me? It's time to wake up. I don't know how else. It's, it's in me to fight. It's in me to, to raise up soldiers. It's in me that every time my feet touch the ground, the state of Florida, these crackers, they scared. That's, I'm telling you right now, I'm kind of pissed off right now that the state of Florida ain't on fire. This could not have happened in L.A. because some brothers up there are not scared to riot. This could not have happened in St. Petersburg, Florida, where the, the black men over there ain't scared to kill a cracker. This is real. We're attacked anywhere in the world. We would defend ourselves by any means necessary. We have proposed and we're pushing forward with a national strike and walk out on this cracking on this beast and on these bastards. We are proposing and pushing for our people that you hit them in the pocket where it hurts. You starve capitalism. Since this racism that's being perpetuated and this brutality that's being perpetuated and this murder that's being perpetuated is built on the table legs of capitalism, you got to starve capitalism. It, what you're saying is real. An, an act of war has been declared on us. We, we don't have no choice but to fight. But I, I want to say that we have to be trained how to fight. See, the whole purpose of the maneuvers that's happening in Sabbath is to train in self-defense because many of us think we're prepared for a battle, just like many of us think we're prepared for a fight. But if you are not training, if you're not stocking up water, if you're not stocking up food, if you're not stocking up weapons and artillery and survival, books and gas masks and flashlights and canteens and uh, re ready to eat meals and all that. Thing. If you're not stocking that up, I don't know how serious we are right now. Absolutely, we want the complete removal of capitalism. Why? Because capitalism sets up a class structure in a class society, as I said in the beginning of the haves and have-nots, that is the pivotal point is racism. It is racism that keeps and perpetuates a capitalistic motion. And so, yes, we want 
capitalism completely eradicated, especially from the minds and hearts and dealings of black people. Do not buy into the race war. We don't need to fight with each other. Uh, our real problem is the elite at the top. Just as we have people who've sold out at the elite level, sold out humanity, want us all dead, even though they have the same skin color as many of the people in this country, other leaders are capable of selling out too. And don't trust anyone telling you you have to go on a killing spree and start a sea of blood uh, because one person they've hived up in the media was killed in a questionable incident. Of course the Trayvon thing was tragic. I wish he hadn't been killed, but we don't need to start a race war over this. Uh, and besides, stuff happens every week, every day uh, to individuals, including many black people who are not, should not have been killed, whether it's police or other uh, black on black crime, whatever it is. Why are they hyping this incident up? In the immortal words of Rodney King, can we not just get along? I mean, really, we don't need to go to this level. It's, it's, it's unproductive. It's counterproductive. It plays into election politics, and I hope it stops somewhere soon, hopefully well short of what the so-called new Black Panther Party people have called for, if indeed they're not just provocateurs in their own right. Meanwhile, in the election campaign, things are seemingly closing in for Mitt Romney, and yet Ron Paul, who couldn't win, can't win, never could even get a vote, can't even win a precinct, continues to draw record crowds. Now that record crowd is more than 10,000 people. That's at the recent UCLA rally. Uh, I believe we have a clip of that. And we could show that there. Uh, meanwhile, he had a 5,000-person rally in Illinois, a 5,200-person rally in Wisconsin in recent days. Uh, and we spent more than an hour researching this. Rob Dew led the effort. Uh, Mitt Romney's largest crowd that at least we could find was in Idaho back on March 1st. It was only 2,200. Mitt Romney, who's supposedly a sure thing for the nomination, his largest crowd is a mere 2,000-plus. Meanwhile, Ron Paul consistently draws five. 5,000, 10,000, uh, or several thousand. Uh, I think you remember our coverage a few months back, a few weeks back anyway, where at the same time Ron Paul was drawing 5,000, Santorum and Romney were drawing a couple hundred, Newt Gingrich was drawing 70 people at events he was doing. Just ask yourself why, why Ron Paul can't be covered.